Okay, this is part two of uh, trying to build along with Tin Man's chop motor. And now what I've done is I've changed out the magnet arrangement on the, the rotor uh, to this arch. I've put the magnet underneath, and underneath that is one of these uh, coils, which is made from the other motor that was taken apart. I've also got the meter here uh, across the 1 ohm resistor, so in fact that's reading milliamps. And on the output from this coil, is a single 1N4148 in the forward direction to a blocking oscillator circuit with a blue LED on it. So, if I start this up slowly, um, what we should see, try and get it to like a sort of tick over, now yeah, that'll do, is that the LED is flickering away. So we've enough coming through from this induction to do that so far. And the milliamps being used, round about 260, 200. 63, 4. Now turn it up to full speed, and what we see is the rotor spin up to full power, full speed, and the LED is on nice and bright. Of course, the voltage has only gone up slightly on the pot as well, uh, with having no limit now, but we're only using 278 coming down a bit milliamps. So, very interestingly, not a lot more is used. Uh, in milliamps by turning the power right up. Obviously, like I say, there's a bit more voltage going in though as well. Anyway, so we're on, what are we on there? 267. If I disconnect the oscillator, we've actually gone up in power used to 270. 271. If I plug it back in again, there we go. We're back down, 268, 267. So, it may be that loading the coil uh, actually makes it a little more efficient. Um, that might be in keeping with what uh, Brad has been showing. But uh, anyway, this is where I'm up to. And the next stage is to, instead of lighting an LED, is to take the energy from perhaps, uh, perhaps dumping from the cap at a particular point on this other commutator on the end here, back into the system and see how we go. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm up to. Okay, thanks for watching.